here we're going to show you three different types of injectors. They each have their place, how they work, what's best, what's worst about each one. If you watch till the end, we'll show you what happens when you pull until things break. This is the articulated with a tractor mounted swinger and swivel row unit. This allows you to keep the injector in the ground the whole time and the with the swinger on mounted on the tractor, basically on piggyback, it allows the most maneuverability for turning around at the ends. It comes around, you can you never have to stop driving. You just keep driving, you don't have to back up. It keeps your neighbors happy. It keeps DEP happy. This is a 30 foot wide with swivel row units. Here we have an extendable swinger on a straight frame tractor. This with swivel units allows you to extend the swinger as you're turning around, gives you slack. So you're, we're trying to get the articulated effect without needing an articulated. So the extendable swinger is something we've been dreaming of doing for several years. We finally made it happen. What this does is when you turn it around at the ends, you can put some slack in your hose, take the tension off, allows you to turn around with a straight frame tractor without having to stop and back up. This is something that it will make you happy. It'll make your neighbors happy because they won't smell the manure. It looks better because you don't have these puddles at the edges of the fields when you're turning around. It is not as easy or is not as convenient as an articulated, you can't get you get more skippers than you will with an articulated. Here we have a swivel row unit with a regular swinger. He's still having to stop and back up. And as you can see, you end up with huddles and some big ones. They were pumping around 2,000 gallons a minute, so it makes for ponds. So the higher, if you're pumping 1,000 gallons a minute, it's not that big of a deal because there's not that much coming out. But when you're at, your, at higher rates, it uh, makes a bigger mess. And this particular farmer, he has some um, landowners that are non-farmers and they said they don't want manure in their ground because it stinks too bad. So anything he can do to get it in the ground so that his landlords don't smell it. The next one is a trailed injector. It is an option if you want to go wide. This particular one here is, is a 30 foot and this tractor has its hands full. Trailed injectors are appealing. You don't need a dedicated tractor like you do with a piggyback swinger. The disadvantage is it's not as maneuverable at the end. You can pull it with a cheap bareback articulated. Bareback means that there's no PTO, there's no three points. One of the single biggest disadvantages with a trailed injector is you have negative tongue weight while you're in the field. So the whole time you're pulling, that hose is pulling down on the back, making the hitch go up. So you have to weight the back of your tractor a lot heavier than you do with a tractor mounted swinger. We have a 30 foot three point injector with a, with a piggyback swinger. We have, it's a John Deere 9360R. We bought it used, it came from a drag line guy. He had the rear wheels were filled with calcium. He had a lot of weights on the back end. We took the weights off, we took the calcium out. We made that tractor several tons later simply because we moved the injector from in the field to on the tractor. So we got a lot less weight going through the field and a lot less weight on the tractor because we have our swinger is pulling on the tractor rather than a trailed unit. And so we got less weight and better maneuverability than what you will with a trailed injector. So a piggyback or tractor mounted swinger, it's mounting up on top of the back axle. So that does a few things. The first thing it does is gets your weight on the tractor. So as you're going through the field and your hose is pulling down, it will give you traction just from that pull. The next thing it does is it's mounted at the back axle. So when you turn, your pivot point is on the tractor rather than back behind the tractor. Because as you're turning around, the back wheels if it's a long pole, the back wheels will tend to slide sideways, but you can still turn your front end in the direction you want to go and you can still make your turn. So with a trailed injector, as you're going into a long pole, you're getting more, the harder it pulls, the more negative tongue weight you have. As you go into a turn, it's going to pull sideways on the injector and then also on the tractor. So hills, a trailed injector is going to want to drift sideways a little more you will also fight it more on the turns. With you, for maneuverability and getting around turns, you can't beat the tractor mounted or piggyback swinger on an articulated. If you don't want an articulated or you have a straight frame, you want to keep using that, you can go trailed. 
However, if you don't need the 40 foot wide so that for flow rates, stick with a 30 foot with an extendable swinger. It's more maneuverable than a trailed unit. The extendable swingers are a new product that we've been working at for several years and we've, we haven't been testing right now. We're producing for spring of 2025. We also have some of our equipment listed on Tractor House and you're welcome to stop in to see the shop, see the farm here in Ole, PA. So we wanted to test this extendable swinger. So with the hydraulic cylinders, I have the ability to measure pressure. So what we're doing here is hooked to the tree. The tractor just spun out, couldn't get enough attraction. So we ex extended the swinger and then pulled it back in. At 21 tons, the six bolts that hold the swivel on, those broke. It didn't hurt the swivel. It was just there's their six bolts that sheared off. So if you're using one of my pieces of equipment and the bolts break off, they, they break at around 21 tons. And that is right up at your braking strength. That is about where your hose is gonna tear off, new hose tears off at, and you're way over stressing your hose. So if you take drag hose, you tear it off. What we found with our testing is, so it'll tear at roughly 45,000 pounds the first time. The next time it tears off, so you cut it back a couple feet. The next time it's gonna tear off 20% sooner. And it's because you have cords tearing internally. If you watch some of my other videos real close, you can see the cords going through the, the white cords in the air as it rips apart. So each time you tear off, they're, they're tearing back in further and you're weakening your hose so you can go 20% less each time. If you go back, cut off back 100 feet, you should be back to good hose again. But um, pay attention to how hard it's pulling and don't overstress your hose. It'll last a lot longer. It was very fascinating to learn that hose will tear, that it tears off easier and easier. It, it's something I had observed. It, it, I always thought it seemed that way, but yet I had no proof until I actually put a scales to it and see what happens.